there is something we need It's a leap of faith Oh, if you have the will and the moment to spare It's a beautiful world out there It's a beautiful world out there As the largest lowland loch in Scotland, Loch Leven is an important site for waterfowl, with up to 35,000 birds present in the winter months. These birds migrate from a variety of places, such as Greenland, Iceland, Ireland, Siberia and northern and central Europe. The loch is particularly important for the pink-footed geese, and up to 20,000 such geese, nearly 10% of the world's population, may be present at any time although many geese move south from the loch as winter progresses. Other birds wintering at Loch Leven include the grey lag geese, whooper swans, golden eyes, tufted ducks, pockets, teals, gadwalls, cormorants and shovelers. The area around Loch Leven has been inhabited for millennia and the remains of a cronog a dwelling constructed on an artificial island, probably during the Iron Age, had been found off Kirkgate Park. At the centre of the loch is an island hosting the ruins of Loch Leven Castle. The castle is strongly associated with Mary Queen of Scots, who was imprisoned here in 1567 to 1568, and forced to abdicate as Queen before escaping with the help of her jailer's family. After her escape, her forces were defeated at the Battle of Langside and she fled to England. Several relics were found during the partial draining of the loch in 1826 to 1836, one of them being a scepter, apparently a cane, hilted with ivory and mounted with silver, upon which were the words, Mary Queen of Scots, found near the Mary Knoll, where she's supposed to have landed after her escape from the castle.
at the end of the walk, we pass the ruins of Burley Castle. The origins of Burley Castle date back to 1446, when the lands were granted to Sir John Balfour of Balgarve by James II. Sometime soon after, the Balfour family built a tower house here and this forms the basis of the North Tower you see today. It is likely that the first tower house stood on the west side of the courtyard, surrounded by an enclosing bamkin wall, in which there would have been other buildings. Immediately to the west, there was still a dip in the land that suggests there may have been a defensive ditch or moat. The next stage in the story of Burley Castle seems to have taken place in 1582, when the picturesque southwest tower was built by Sir James Balfour of Pittendrich and his wife Margaret Balfour, heiress of Burley. On its completion, the rebuilt castle seems to have comprised of a quadrangle, a west range of, of which on the front walls now survives, connected the two towers, while a south range projected to the east of the southwest tower. The remaining two sides of the square would probably have been enclosed by a barnkin wall. In 1607, Sir Michael Balfour, son of Sir James and Margaret Balfour, was raised to the peerage, becoming Lord Balfour of Burley after his appointment as ambassador to the Duke of Tuscany and Lorraine. The family continued to thrive for a further century until things took a serious turn for the worse in 1707. This was the year in which Robert Balfour, son of the fourth Lord Balfour of Burley, was sentenced to death for the murder of the Inverkeething schoolmaster who had married the woman Balfour himself wished to marry. He seemed to have escaped from his imprisonment in Edinburgh and fled to the continent. Worse was to follow when the fourth Lord of Burley, also a Robert Balfour, came out in favour of the Jacobite cause in 1715. After the failure of the 1715 uprising, Robert Balfour was amongst many Jacobite peers who were attained, in other words, who had their estates and titles seized by the government. Robert Balfour died in exile in France in 1757. <laughs>